Unit 2, Video Lecture 1, Properties of Matter. When we describe matter, we use one of two properties. We use physical or chemical properties. Physical properties are characteristics that can be observed without changing the chemical makeup of the substance. Examples of physical properties include density, color, odor, melting, boiling point, and melting point. Separate from this, we have chemical properties. And chemical properties, have to, we have to alter the matter, and we have to create something new. Let's consider a green polo. Upon closer observation, we can see that it's clearly green. This didn't change the makeup of the shirt, so color is a physical property. If we were to take this polo and put it on a scale, we, and get the mass to be 122 grams, we still haven't changed the composition, therefore mass is a physical property. But what if we wanted to test the flammability of the shirt? Well, by putting the shirt into the fire, we would create something new. We create ash. This is a different chemical composition than our original polo. So flammability is a chemical property. So here's a list of physical and chemical properties of copper. Pause the video lecture and let's identify whether or not these are physical properties or chemical properties. If you said everything on the right hand column was a chemical property, you'd be correct. All of these on the left, the reddish brown and shiny, the easily shaped into sheets and drawn into wires, good, conduct, good conductor of heat and electricity, the density, melting, and boiling points, we're, all, we're always going to have copper after we measure any of those properties. But when we form green copper carbonate, well, copper carbonate isn't copper. Here we see it forms a new compound. And here we say that it, and we see that it forms a blue solution. These are all creating something new that wasn't there before. Hello. Sometimes it's difficult to come up with the words to describe the differences between a physical property of matter and a chemical property of matter. Physical properties of matter help us to describe and observe matter, and they often involve our senses. A chemical property of a particular substance is that particular substance's potential to change into a new substance, usually when it encounters another substance and it may involve some form of energy. This next song, called the Property Song, will help you distinguish some of the characteristics of both properties of matter. Substance in their way, their atoms may decide to 
and get all rearranged. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, yeah, that's physical, your senses tell you so. Can you measure the matter in some way? That's physical for sure, oh, by the way. That's physical for sure, oh, by the way. That's physical for sure, oh, by the way. Another physical property is the state of matter that we would find. There are three common states of matter. There are solids, liquids, and gases. Solids have molecules that are most densely packed together. We say that it has a definite shape and a definite volume. Why do we call it definite? Because that shape and that volume will not change if you change the container that you find that solid in. It doesn't mean the shape will, can never change. It just means by simply changing its container, a solid will retain its state. Liquids, on the other hand, have slightly more room in between the particles. As you can see here, there's room and there's space that we can find in between it. Because of this room, because of these weaker internal forces, the liquid's shape changes based on the container that it's in. However, the volume of a liquid is always definite. Gases, on the other hand, the shape and the volume change as a result of the container that they're in. They have the most space behind them, and they have the weakest internal forces. This is what allows you to change both the volume and the shape of the container, or the gas. So, what phase of matter is the solid block of ice? If you said solid, you'd be right. Well, right now, this ice, this solid ice, is outside of the glass. If we move it inside the glass, did the shape of the ice cube change? Did the volume? Neither, because both shape and volume are constant. But now, if we take a look at a liquid, there are those particles in the liquid, and right now, we would say that the beaker has a cylinder shape. But if we change the shape of the container from a beaker to, say, a flask, the, the shape of the molecules changes to a triangle shape, to a pyramid, or perhaps even a cone. We still have the same number of molecules. Those molecules still take up the same amount of space. So we have a constant volume, but a different shape.